If you are stuck in a job or career that you just don't really like, it's unfulfilling, just doesn't light you up at all, like maybe it never did or anymore, and your fear is getting in the way, it's kind of keeping you stuck, there's all the things your fear is telling you, then I want you to watch this YouTube training on how to overcome your fear of failure. Why, hello, I'm Sarah Curto, and I am the career coach who takes unhappy workers from dreading their days, exhausted, underpaid, underappreciated, overworked, to finding a career that they love, where they have more meaning, where they make more money, and where they have more energy to actually live the life that they want. This is my YouTube channel where I come to you every week with a different training uh, on anything that has to do with job searches, careers, career development and advancement, like literally career changes, everything to do with careers. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Subscribe so that you don't miss any of my trainings and you can even click the notifications and you'll get notified when I drop a new video or training. So first up, fear of failure. And we, just as a side note, we can't be brave or courageous unless we are afraid. And which means there's a vulnerability to being courageous. And so one way that you can overcome this fear of failure is by joining my Courageous Career Challenge. Now, this is happening June 6th to June 16th, 17th. Um, so you have to sign up soon to get this. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a checklist. You're going to get an invite to the career networking group that's over on Facebook. And we are doing 10 days of bravery, of courageous career acts. So this is you picking only five from the list. And there's a ton of different ideas on the list. And the whole purpose is to ignite our careers again, to build momentum, to getting happy again in our, in our roles, in our jobs, in our careers. So the link to join us is below. Let's turn the, our careers off autopilot and let's start being intentional with them again. I cannot, I honestly am so excited about this. So I can't wait to see you in there, but Side note over, <laughs> I had to do with it, it made sense. Um, so I spent 15 years stuck in a career that I hated. Honestly, I knew the very first day. I remember my very first day, my very first recruitment job. I was living with my aunt at the time and I went home and she asked me how it was. And I said, oh, it was okay, but I don't think this is for me. I don't know if I can even last a year in it. 15 years later, I finally did something about it. And it's because I was terrified for a lot of it to do anything. And the things like my brain liked to offer to me is I was terrified of making the wrong choice. Like I went to school for human resources. This was my first day that I decided that it wasn't the right fit. What if I did that again? What if I spent time and money and I show up and on that first day, wasn't for me. I was afraid of wasting the time and energy and money that I had already spent. I kind of felt that if I made something, a different choice, well, number one, the kind of shame and embarrassment of like, hello, I just spent all this money in this time and oh, it wasn't for me. But so I was afraid of wasting that and of other people's opinions about me wasting it. And then I was also terrified of not finding it, of not, of going through all the work of trying to figure out what I actually wanted in a career and finding a career that lines up with that. And there being nothing. Like, what would that mean? Would that mean that I was stuck in this? Like I almost was afraid of that answer. But you notice the root of all of these things is failure. 
the failure that I felt at already not choosing the right thing and afraid of doing that again, or afraid of even changing, being successful in changing, but essentially alerting the world to my failure in the first place. My failure of making that wrong choice, doing this all over again and making the wrong choice, or the failure of there not being anything for me. So my fear of failure is what kept me stuck for 15 long years. And this is a common, honestly, this is a common theme for us overachievers. Because when you are an overachiever, you generally don't fail much. And our, never mind our education system, promotes success constantly, and it never promotes failure. So there's all of that. But like I was the oldest child and my parents own their own business. So I also had to take care of my sister a lot. So I was the responsible one. I was not allowed to fail. I was also the smart kid in class. Straight A student did very well. Failure was not an option. I was also an athlete who, I don't know if any of you watch Parks and Recreation, but I think Ron Swanson, when he was a basketball coach and he threw the chair on to the court. The writer who did that must have based it off of one of my coaches because that's a real life story. <laughs> that was an occurrence that we dealt with. If we failed or if we even missed a shot, we had to do laps or push ups or something. Failure was punished, it was not encouraged. So it is no surprise that as an overachiever, that the idea of failure paralyzed me, but it changed. Everything changed when my grandfather passed away. And that was five years ago, five years ago, almost exactly. It was May, 2017, five years ago, he passed away. And he was the type of person who at the age of 80 wrote a bucket list. Life was for living. And he failed on his bucket list. He wrote skydiving and he tried so hard to find a company that would take an 80 plus year old up with them. That wouldn't also cost him an arm and a leg (laughs) because you could pay for it. But, you know, he took massive action. He was willing to travel anywhere. So he paraglided instead. (laughs) My 80 plus year old grandfather paraglided instead. He took massive action, failed, and found something else. And it was okay that he failed because he still did something spectacular. So I had this like moment where it was like, enough is enough. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep starting and stopping into figuring something else. You can't keep up all of these sleepless nights of being anxious and stressed. You can't keep letting your dislike of your work seep into all areas of your life. You can't keep doing this, Sarah. What would Poppy say? That was what we call my Poppy. He would say, you go for it. You can't be afraid of failure because what if you can? What if you can do this? So... Oh, I went all in and it was terrifying, but I did it anyway. And so as a starting entrepreneur does, as I listened to a lot of podcasts and it was super interesting because a lot of the podcast episodes I was listening to ended up, and it was like, I didn't seek these out. It just ended up people who were successful because they failed so much. And there was this one episode on the Life Coach School podcast where Brooke Castillo talks about purposely failing, on purpose failing. And I was like, light bulb moment. I have to start doing that. I have to start putting myself out there and failing and then learning from it. Now, obviously I was choosing things. I was hoping to be successful, but I was literally making goals that I had no business in making. I was doing things that I had no business doing based off of my experience based off of, you know, like 
my audience size or whatever, but like things that did not make sense for me to try and go after, I was going after them anyway. And yeah, sometimes I did succeed, succeed, but most of the time I failed (laughs) and I failed hard and publicly. And I would tell people about it as horrible as that felt. I would be like, when someone would ask, so did you get any signups for that course? Nope. I didn't. (laughs) I would tell them because I wanted to get used to failure, but I also evaluated. I figured out what went wrong. What could I do better? What lessons have I learned from this failure, which propelled my success? I am in a bracket of impact that like 1% of coaches have because I am constantly open to failing. And in fact, I had another major aha moment this year, which is the whole purpose of this YouTube training. I'm finally getting here. And that is a failure I had this year. I set a goal, set a timeline for that goal. I failed at that goal. And it was probably the best thing I've ever experienced in my five years of owning a business. And it also gave me this analogy because once I failed that goal, I recognized that that wasn't the goal I wanted. I saw something else because sometimes failure is like reaching a false summit. And only once we reach that false summit, can we see the actual summit that we want to get to. So I had set this goal. I thought this was the goal I wanted. I worked hard at getting to that goal because I couldn't see the actual goal because it was hidden by this first one. And only once I got there and failed, like reaching the false summit is like failing, was I able to see that, oh, it's this other one instead. And the feeling of energy and excitement and like, oh my gosh, this is it. And it has led to so much transformation in me, in my confidence, in my, I can't wait to keep failing. If this is what is going to happen, if failure is just going to actually make it easier for me to succeed and actually show me, like shine a flashlight on what it is I really, really want and the impact I really, really want to have, then I'm all for it. This is the message I want you to take. That what if failing was just a false summit? And what if you needed to fail in order to figure out what it is that you want instead or anyways? What if that has to happen? How would you be willing to fail today? And you can start with baby steps. Honestly, sometimes that fear of failure, to me, the very first step that really pushed me into getting comfortable with failure, and this is a step I really want you to take, was telling people. It was telling my husband, I want to start a business. It was telling family, I'm going to start a business. It was sending out that first email asking for networking connections for my business. I was sending my first resume. It was making my first offer to help someone one-on-one. That first act of telling someone, because then they're going to ask you. And if it didn't work out, you're going to need to tell them. And hot damn, is that scary? (laughs) But That is the first step that I want you to take towards facing this fear of failure so you can finally get unstuck. And then I definitely want you to sign up for the Courageous Career Challenge because there's a whole bunch of other little baby steps there that we can take that start building that momentum to massive change. And then I want you to think about joining the Career Love Academy. 
It opens in June 15th to June 22nd. And that is the place where we evaluate, where we learn, where we actually are able to take our failures and use them as fuel to our success. So we can accelerate it. We can make it so much easier because sometimes avoiding failure actually makes it impossible to succeed. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe, hit notifications, comment below is the biggest one. Please comment below. Tell me what your first step is. Who are you going to tell? Maybe even just type in there, I want a career change, or I want a new job, or I hate my current job. Tell us we can be that first person. Oh, okay. And I will see you here next week with another quick training for your career. Take care. Have a great night or a day. Bye.